Welcome to my channel. I'm Zhang Jingxu. Let's look at the problem 34 in chapter 26. Chapter 26 is about DC circuits. There, we need to determine magnitude and direction for current in each resistor, right? So we look at this battery, this circuit. We have two batteries, the EMF epsilon one, epsilon two, and three resistors R one, R two, R three, right? If we want to solve it. In the traditional way, it's maybe difficult. You look at its power connection, service connection. By there, we can look at the Cherhoff's loop rule, right? So first one, first case, ask us in, in, ignore internal resistance of battery. So there, this means this is a perfect battery. So we just consider the voltages for battery, right? So how can we do that? We look at this uh, circuit. We assume the current goes through R1 is I1 go to the right. And the current goes through the R2 is I2 pointing to left. And then the current goes through the R3 is I3 goes up, right? Now we can see, first one, we look at this point. For this point, you can see the current I2 flows in. And the current I1 and I3 flows out at this point. The current is conserved. So that, that may that then we can write the equation I2 equal to I1 plus I3. Right? And then we can draw a first loop. So we look at how we draw the loop. So we can from the epsilon, the first battery, the current then goes through R1, then go to R2, right? This is a clockwise loop. And then we can see the battery increases the voltages. So we write epsilon 1, and then the current goes through resistor R1 makes the voltage decrease, right? So minus I1 times R1, and then the current goes through the R2 makes the voltage decrease. So I2 times R2 equal to 0. Mm -hmm. The second part, we can draw another loop. So we from there, we can see the epsilon 2 just uh, increase the voltages, right? Then goes through the R3, then goes through the R2, which is a start point. This is a complete loop, the voltage equal to zero. So we can write epsilon 2, then the current goes through R3, so minus I3 times R3, and then the current goes through R2, so minus R2 times I2 equal to zero, right? Now we have these three equations. We input given quantities, it looks like this way. And then you can see we have three unknown quantities and three equations. You can solve these equations, get the quantity for I1, I2, I3 there. The next one to us, the second case, assume each battery has internal resistance R equal to 1 ohms. Is that difficult? No, it's just one step further, right? Still, we can consider the current is conserved. So the current flows in I2 equal to current flows out I1 plus I3. And then when the first loop, when the current goes through the batteries, we can see there are the EMF for battery one. And also the current also has the, goes through the internal resistance for battery. So minus I1 times R, right? Minus I1 times R. So we just need to replace epsilon 1 as epsilon 1 minus I1 times R, right? Because there, the, we must consider the voltage drops by the internal resistance of the battery. The second case, we can look at this one. The current goes through the epsilon 2, as we talk about in this picture, is current I3, right? So that means when the current goes through the battery 2, there is still a little bit of voltage decrease by the internal resistance of battery. So this is minus the I3 times R. And the rest part, the left part, are exactly the same. So now we have these three equations. You input the given quantities inside, and then you can solve them, get the final answer there. It's almost the same if you round it up. Thank you.